these are uh, the models that have to do with the respiratory system. This is the respiratory board. Okay, you have your nares. The nares are going to allow air in or out of the nasal cavity. These are the external nares, and these are the internal nares. This whole entire structure here is the nasal cavity, and you have your superior nasal concha, your middle nasal concha, and your inferior nasal concha. Remember that the superior and middle nasal concha are part of the ethmoid bone, and the inferior nasal concha are a separate bone all to themselves. You might remember that from AMP1. Okay, then you have the pharynx. We typically call the pharynx the throat region. This is the part of the pharynx that's in contact with the nasal cavity, so it's called the nasopharynx. This is the part of the pharynx that's in contact with the oral cavity, so it's the oral pharynx. This is the part of the pharynx that's in contact with the larynx, so this is the laryngeopharynx. If you look at the roof of the mouth, you have this bone here. This is the, this is the hard palate, and this is the soft palate on the posterior side of it. You have this little piece of tissue that hangs down at the back of the throat, and that's called the uvula. The epiglottis, the epiglottis is going to be pushed by the tongue, and it's going to cover the glottis. This number 14 here, this is the epiglottis, the little floppy piece of tissue here. The pharyngeal tonsils are in the pharynx. This is the pharynx here, and these are the pharyngeal tonsils up here at the top. They're also known as the adenoid tonsils. This is the trachea, and if you come over here to this enlarged structure, this is the trachea, this is the larynx, and this is the trachea. The trachea divide into your primary bronchi, so you have two primary bronchi. The primary bronchi are gonna divide into secondary bronchi, so here you have a secondary bronchi here, 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 and here. The tertiary bronchi would be the further divides, but they're not on your list of things to know. But you're going to have divisions and divisions. You have bronchioles, and then down here at the little tiny part right here, that would be a um, terminal bronchiole. So I'm going to lift this up, and this is actually a terminal bronchiole here because it's going to take the air to the alveoli. Each individual circle is an alveolus. Um, we typically call those air sacs, but alveoli is what we need to talk, we need to call them in this class. This is a blue blood vessel here. That's going to be deoxygenated blood, so that's a pulmonary arterial carrying deoxygenated blood towards the alveoli to have gas exchange. Then you have the red blood vessel here, that's the pulmonary venule that is carrying oxygenated blood back to the heart. So we're finished with the respiratory system board, so let's go over to the um, torso model. In the torso model, we start looking at the head. Okay. Is this a good angle? Yeah. Okay, the head here, you have your um, olfactory sensory area. These are the olfactory neurons that are up here at the top part of the nasal cavity. Those neurons are going to pass through the olfactory foramina um, to take the information about smell to the inferior portion of the brain. You might remember from AMP1, you have um, cranial nerve number one, olfaction. So this is the olfactory sensory areas. Each individual line is an olfactory nerve. And I can turn it up like this right here, and you see the holes here for the olfactory foramina. You remember the olfactory foramina in the cribriform plate? And this right here is the Cristigalli. Okay, the pharyngeotympanic tube opening is located right here. Um, one end of it here is in the nasopharynx. The other end of it meets with the middle ear where your malleus, incus, and stapes are found. You have internal nares. Internal nares would be here. External nares would be here because they're going to allow air in and out of the nasal cavity. So this whole structure here is the nasal cavity. This is the superior nasal concha, middle nasal concha, inferior nasal concha. This is the hard palate. This is the soft palate where there's no bone. And then you have the uvula that hangs down at the back of the throat. The pharynx is the throat region. So this is the nasopharynx, this is the oropharynx, and this is the laryngeopharynx. The uvula, um, we already talked about it. Let me look at my list here. Um, okay, we're down to pharyngeal tonsils. The pharyngeal tonsils are these tonsils that are located right up here in the nasopharynx, also known as the adenoids. The palaton tonsils, this is the palate here. These are the palaton tonsils. They're the ones that you typically, somebody would open their mouth and you would see on the lateral side of the oral cavity. 
the lingual tonsils, they would be underneath the tongue, but they're not shown on your model. Um, the trachea, this would be, this is the trachea here, and this is the esophagus. This is the trachea, and you can also see it up here on the torso model at the very top. Um, this right here is the trachea, and this is the esophagus here. The diaphragm, you gotta come down to the um, structure here. Is that a good angle? Yes. Okay, here's the diaphragm here, and you also see it, the lung fits in right here, and if you take the diaphragm out, you see this red um, muscle, and that's the diaphragm. The primary bronchi, these are the primary bronchi that are gonna take air to each individual lung. You have your parietal pleura and visceral pleura. These are the linings of the pleural membranes. This is the parietal pleura here and your visceral pleura would be directly attached to the lung surface. That's the visceral pleura. Okay, pulmonary arteries are going to be carrying deoxygenated blood, so this blue blood vessel right here is a pulmonary artery, and the pulmonary venules are carrying oxygenated blood back to the heart. The trachea. Okay, hey, this is the trachea model. Let me there if they come out of the way. Here's the trachea model. This is the um, thyroid cartilage. If you look at the thyroid cartilage, you see how there's a gap here. This right here is the cricoid cartilage. And if we turn the model around, this is all cricoid cartilage also. You see that all of the structure here is above the tracheal rings. So the tracheal rings are going to be inferior to the larynx. The arachnoid cartilages, turn it around to the back here. These are the arachnoid cartilages here. They move the vocal cords. And if you look into that opening there, you see the vocal cords are in the brown suede material and they're vibrating. I don't know about vibrating, but they're moving. And um, this is the epiglottis here. And the opening here that my finger would be passing through is the glottis. So um, to kind of go back through this model, you have your thyroid cartilage cricoid cartilage, and cricoid cartilage also is back here at the back. Your arachnoid cartilages are here. You have the epiglottis, you have the glottis, which is the opening, and you have the vocal cords, which is your brown material there that would vibrate whenever you talk.